Mm, all right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I was sitting here answering some emails, and I just got an email that is a question to a very similar question that I get pretty frequently, which is, why does you know why do things taste weird? Like, why does this taste weird? Why does my RDA taste weird? Why does my subone tank taste weird? Sometimes it's always followed by sometimes. Like. Why does my RDA taste weird sometimes? It happens to me, and I think it happens to everybody, and, and the situation I'm talking about isn't necessarily like a brand new build with brand new wicks, and then you put your liquid on, and then you vape it, and you're like, why does this taste weird? That's not the situation I'm talking about. The situation I'm talking about is when you have a setup, or a device, or a mod with an RDA. This is a perfect example right here. We're gonna use this Ruby. This, this Ruby that I just got in the vlog not too long ago, to post Ruby, I built it, I wicked it, I loaded it up with Turkish maize a few weeks ago. And then sometimes what will happen is you'll kind of not, not necessarily neglect your devices. You know, you're not punishing them by not using them, but sometimes a device with either an RDA or a sub ohm tank on top will kind of sit on your desk or sit on your shelf for a few days and not get used at all. This happens to me mostly when I travel, if I have setups and stuff sitting on my desk, like this UL Valerian or UL Valerian, what? UL Soul Keeper Recoil Rebel Combo sitting on my desk. If I leave that sitting on my desk, with the coils, with the wicks, with the liquid in there, and I leave for a few days and then I come back to it, it tastes weird. When you go to vape it, it just tastes weird, it vapes weird, it feels weird. You'll kind of get a little bit of flavor, but the flavor is really muted. You'll get some vapor, but the vapor feels wispy. It doesn't feel like it's vaporizing and crackling it. It kind of just feels like it's like sizzling, like cooking it in there, and the vapor you exhale isn't very thick. Like I said, it's a little bit wispy and it's overall just a weird experience. That is the situation I'm talking about and what I've discovered recently through talking to multiple people in the industry, including M. Turk. M. Turk is the one who really helped educate me on this because I didn't know what was going on. But what happens when you let your RDA or sub ohm tank kind of just sit unused for a while is it collects moisture. Moisture actually condenses on the coils. Just moisture from the, from the environment around you is, is kind of collecting on your coils. So when you've let your RDA or sub ohm tank kind of sit there and collect moisture on it, your first pull back, your first rip or toot or whatever we call it these days, your first drag back is gonna be weird and it's gonna feel wrong and it's gonna taste weird and like I said, the vapor is gonna be wispy. And when this sort of moisture on your coils phenomenon happens after letting your thing sit for a little while, you have a, a couple options to get it back working normal. You can A, take the time to re-wick and re-saturate your coils and it should vape real well after that. You can also just kind of vape through it, which isn't necessarily like a real pleasant experience. I find myself doing a lot of like purging on top of purging on top of purging to kind of get that moisture off of your coils and get it vaping well again. The only reason I'm doing that is because this exact situation has happened recently with the Bole Bolu. It's one of those things where I just have a few things set up on my desk. I always have a bunch of setups going and if one of them is just there and I don't use it and I don't use it and a few days go by and that moisture kind of condenses on those coils, the same thing happens to me. But once you purge through it or vape through it, it should really only take a few a few minutes. I mean, I've never spent really more than five minutes kind of vaping through that weird condensation. I don't even know there's a term for this. There's not a term for it. I, I guess I call it swamp addy is what I used to call it when any sort of moisture would get in there and kind of, you know, funk up the vape. When you get that swamp addy kind of thing happening. And like I said, the only real way to prevent it is to 
vape it, vape through it, vape constantly, and don't let your device, you know, your coil sit for too long, especially with a sub-ohm tank. It happens a lot in sub-ohm tanks, and I am the biggest offender of sub-ohm tanks. I'll fill them up and I'll just let them sit, and then you kind of have to vape through that weirdness before your sub-ohm tank starts feeling normal again. Alternatively, if you plan on not using a product, not using an atomizer or a sub-ohm tank for a while, just take it out, empty it, fill it, pull your, pull your wicks out, dry fire your coils, and then just put it and, and set it aside so you can avoid all this, although that seems like quite, quite the hassle. So at the end of the day, you're just gonna have to vape through it. Don't worry, your vape isn't broken. It just has some condensation of moisture on the coils and you can easily, easily vape through it. I just don't want people getting, you know, frustrated and dissuaded like, well, this isn't vaping like it used to and then kind of giving up on it. Definitely not a situation to give up on. There's nothing, nothing critical, detrimental going on there. It's just some moisture. Mo what? It's just some moisture and you just have to vape through it. I've talked to a lot of people recently that are kind of transitioning from pod systems into maybe a more RDA, RTA, sub-ohm tank type of hobbyist vaping. And they're kind of running into these issues for the first time. So a little bit of general knowledge and information back out there, sort of the basics, like back to basics. Hobbyist vaping does take a, a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of love, a little bit of care. You kind of have to look over, look after your gear, keep, you know, look after your coils, keep them re-wicked, keep things like this. But the reward is, uh, in my opinion, a far more flavorful and far uh, superior uh, vape from, from a pod system. But I didn't mean for this to take such a political turn. I didn't mean to go like anti-pod systems on this. I'm not anti-pod systems on this. And I'm going to wrap this up before I just keep rambling. But that's what I got for today, everybody. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, even if you have to vape through the moisture, yeah, dude, let's keep on vaping.